What is poppin' everybody? It is your boy Matthew Maley for MatthewMaley.com. As you can tell, we are on the couch. It is officially Friday night. Actually, Saturday morning. I lied. And it's time for another weekly movie review with yours truly. This week, um, gotta say there wasn't a whole lot at the uh, Blockbuster Express that I went to rent. A um, couple things are actually coming out in the next couple weeks. I am excited to see um, Ides of March being one of them. I'm really excited to see that. Um, there's a couple others. One that I was asked to review by one of my female friends. And uh, while I really don't want to, I kind of told her I would. Yeah, I'm sure you guys can figure out what teeny bopper flick I'm referring to that's about to be released or just was released or whatever. So decide which team you're on and watch my review next week, probably. I don't know. I can't. I, I'm not sure if I'm going to bring myself to do it or not. But this week, um, before we get into the world of huge wolves and vampires, we take a journey down to Mississippi and follow the small town interworkings um, between a very small town of drunks and to Hollywood individuals in that of Straw Dogs, um, a remake of an old Dustin Hoffman film. Um, it's actually pretty much identical to the original and kind of ironic. It actually released um, exactly 30 years and one day to the day that the original film released in England. Um, the original film actually was set in England as well. Um, when, like I said, starring Dustin Hoffman. This version is set in the Mississippi Gulf Coast area, starring James, is it Mars? Yeah, Marsden, um, Kate Bosworth, Alexander Skarsgård, um, James Woods, who is a really good poker player, shout out to James Woods, um, as well as rather extended cameos by um, Dominic Purcell and Walter Goggins, um, who was my boy Shane from The Shield and is also in one of my new favorite shows, Justified, um, as well as a pretty solid role by uh, Reese um, Corio. Corio? I don't know how you pronounce his name, but he was Billy Walsh from Entourage. My dude. Love Entourage. One of my all-time favorite shows. Um, I still won't finish watching it. I'm so sad that it's coming to an end. I have all of season eight ready to be watched. I won't do it. Um, I know, I'm dumb. But uh, that's kind of the basic cast. There are a few other people that I'd seen in a few other movies before, but those were the, by far the most well-known actors. And the basic synopsis um, of the story is a Hollywood couple, that of James Marsden and Kate Bosworth, move to this small town in Mississippi to fix up Kate Bosworth's old house, essentially. Um, she was raised in this small town and moved to Hollywood, Ended up starring on a big TV show, everybody in town saw, and married James Marsden character, who is a screenwriter in Hollywood. Um, he decides he wants to write a book on uh, the battle in Stalingrad um, of the Russians, World War II, and um, essentially, World War II or World War I? God, I used to know every single battle in both the wars. That shows you what happens when you're out of school for 15 years. Um, wow. But his goal is to come to this really, you know, quaint house out in the middle of the Mississippi swamplands and knock out a book. Well, on his first, you know, day or two back in town, he ends up meeting um, his wife, Kate Bothers, old fling or old boyfriend from high school, played by Alexander Skarsgård who I think is a very good actor. Um, I think he sometimes gets overlooked because of his brother, but um, I think he's actually a, a really solid actor. Um, and I thought he played the part pretty well. Um, upon meeting him, finally he's a handyman, and he is going to fix the barn um, that they that's on their property. So from the beginning, you start to see the elements of the pissing contest between... Kate's old man and her current man. And, I mean, from the jump. And he's very passive. Uh, Alexander Skarsgård's character 
his name's Charlie in the movie, is very, very passive aggressive with the way that he taunts um, James Martin's character, trying to come off as the good guy, oh, yes, sir, oh, I'll take care of that, sir, but then getting little jabs in there and little taunts and things to test his manly, to just James's manliness, if you will. Um, his name, James Madsen, or Martin's character's name is uh, David in the movie. And so Charlie's constantly taking those little jabs at, at David and constantly trying to test him. Um, making comments about his $100,000 Jaguar that's there, um, that, that they own, that they're driving around this teeny little town. You know, essentially a car that would probably pay for the town that they're driving. You know, little... Just little, every little thing that they can pick at, they do. And, you know, from the beginning, you can see the animosity. It's very clear. Um, from them waking up super early and leaving super early <laughs> to, um, right, while they're trying to work on the barn, to making comments about him not wanting to hunt, to ending up setting him up. Regarding that topic, I don't want to give too much away about the movie because there are some some little twists in it, um, as well as an unfortunate incident with um, well something in the house. Um, there really is just a lot of bad stuff happening, and as much as David's character really just wants to be one of the guys, he wants to get that exception that acceptedness, um, you know, be accepted from this group, and doesn't. Nobody wants to be the outcast, you know. Even if you are worlds apart from the people that are in town, you still don't want to. So as things start to get worse and worse, um, things start to really deteriorate with Kate Bosworth's character. Her character name was uh, was Amy in this movie. And she really was skirting the line between challenging David's character and also really just taunting Charlie's character and scenes where she's not wearing a bra or scenes where she actually exposes herself topless or all those little things trying to get at David's character but at the same time also building up a lot in Charlie's character and there's a pretty brutal scene in the middle um, that really changes the whole setup of the movie. Everything up to that point was very... Uh, not not okay, but much more just like, oh, just mischievous guys, you know? Nothing took it to that level. There's a scene in the middle that definitely takes it to that level and um, was very tough to watch, to be quite honest. But from that point on, the movie definitely starts to change. And, I mean, it had its pretty stereotypical you know, portrayal of small town, how the entire town comes together to go watch the football game, and they've got a band playing, and, you know, they took it a little bit to the extreme. I understand how small towns work. I've spent a lot of time in small towns, but they definitely made it a little too stereotypical, and I've spent a lot of time in small town southern towns, and they still took it over the top a little bit. Um, and once kind of that brutality happens, things really start to spiral out of control um, when James Wood's character, um, who's an old coach from the football team and an absolute drunk um, and a very over, overly protective father, um, when his daughter goes missing, that's when the proverbial shit hits the proverbial fan. Um, through some unfortunate events, it then becomes known that the person there concerned might have something to do with their inability to find his daughter is being protected by James and Kate's characters. And that's when things go a little crazy. And the siege on the house begins, and, well, it, it definitely got pretty intense towards the end. Um, I don't want to give, like I said, I don't want to give too much away. Because it was a movie that, I, in my opinion, was worth watching. Um, I haven't seen the original, but from what I've heard, um, it's pretty much identical. And the original was better, even though, kind of funny little aside, Dustin Hoffman actually did not like the movie. When it was all finished, he actually voiced his opinion multiple times that it was not a good movie and it was not well done. 
So that's kind of kind of ironic, I guess. Not too often you see a star of a film come out and badmouth his film. But um, overall, I give the movie three stars. At the end of the day, it was about an average movie, in my opinion. Um, it definitely earned its rated R-ness um, from that brutal scene I spoke of in the middle, as well as the violence that occurs in the last probably 30 minutes of the movie. Um, as well as a couple moments before then, um, and some, you know, vulgar language throughout. But the violence that, that occurs is just crazy. I mean, it goes, it goes from zero to blood and guts in no time flat. <laughs> it's like me getting on the freeway on my Hayabusa. It's just zero buck fifty like that. So it, it definitely was kind of shocking almost to see how it went. But, um, and it, it, Definitely did keep you on your toes a few of the moments towards the end and um, continues my statement that every person in the world should know how to use a firearm. Just saying. Even if it's just how to load, unload, take off a safety, that's good. Um, I don't want to give, again, like I said, too much away, but there's some spots in there that, God, a gun safety 101 class would have done wonders. So overall... I give it three stars. Um, it was a very average movie to me. I thought the beginning was kind of long and plodding and took a while to get going. I thought a lot of the dialogue was kind of forced. Um, and I thought, as much as I do like James Woods, I thought his character was over the top. Um, I thought Alexander Skarsgård's character, which I like him, as I said, and I thought he was pretty good in this movie, but I thought even he kind of bounced around a little too much. And he went from one second being uh, genuinely friendly and nice to the next second sociopathic. So, I, I don't know, I thought that they did a little bit too much with that. And then pretty much everybody else in the town just portrayed as some redneck, white trash, drunken hick, to be quite honest. So, um, and being, you know, that I have a lot of family in the South, I know that's true for a lot of people, but not everybody. So, come on. Um, but yeah, so, overall, three-star movie. Um, I would say it was worth a dollar at Blockbuster Express. They're doing a dollar movie special. That's one of them that's included in that. So, I would say it's worth the dollar. But don't expect much. I mean, you don't really feel happy or good or sense of accomplishment after watching the movie. But in the same sense, you also don't feel like you wasted that much time either. So... If you got some time to kill, watch it, but don't expect much. Um, everybody's acting was decent. Um, I did kind of like, towards the end, seeing James Martin's character just getting pushed and pushed and pushed too far. Finally, kind of snaps. <laughs> and uh, that's kind of fun to watch. Just You can literally see like the fire in his eyes and him just go off the deep end a little bit, which was kind of a, a fun transformation to watch. Um, I guess it's always kind of fun to see somebody turn into the Hulk, literally. Well, not literally, figuratively. We're going to be seeing that on May 4th, thanks to the Avengers. Holla! Um, but anyway, just wanted to put that out there and let you guys hear my review. So hopefully you guys liked the review, whether you liked or disliked the movie. It's completely up to you, but uh, I'd love to know. So if you can, drop me a comment. Maybe hit me up on my website, matthewmailey.com. Drop something in the comments discussion tab. Let me know what you guys thought. Did you like the movie? Did you dislike it? Did you like my review? Did you dislike it? Have you seen the original with Dustin Hoffman? How was it? I'm curious. So, as always, I want to say thank you to everybody for checking out my videos. I am Matthew Maley for MatthewMaley.com. Um, of course, you can check out all my videos on MatthewMaley.com. Just click on the video blog tab. You've got everything loading up right there. And... Uh, there for your viewing pleasure. Or you can check me out on YouTube. You can either double click one of those videos or you can go on YouTube.com, search for Matthew Maley Poker and you will get my whole list um, of everything on there. And while you're there, you can subscribe to the channel so you are first to find out about all my new videos as well as maybe drop me a comment, maybe throw me a like, watch it a few times, I won't say no. Or you can follow your boy on Twitter. Well, how about and? No ors, do them all. Follow your boy on Twitter, at Matthew Maley. And, of course, like your boy's page on Facebook. Search for Matthew Maley Poker. Like that, and you get everything you need to know about me. 
So, until the next video, your boy is officially signing off. Hope everybody has a great weekend. And until uh, the next video, peace out, y'all.